Prime Minister uh, Wang Yi. Uh, one thing I, I saw you also ask China uh, to nudge uh, Iran mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to this uh, crisis. Second, with regard to China, they have a, a clear, obvious interest in stability in, in the Middle East. Uh, they obviously depend on the region for uh, energy resources. Um, there are many vital trading partners. 90% of the oil, com uh, 90 was, of the exactly. Iranian oil, I think, is bought by China. Yeah. Well, there's that too, which is another, another challenge. But uh, you start with the premise that they have an interest in stability here. They also have relationships. They have influence. And so the question that I raised with, uh, uh, with our Chinese counterparts is, given that, um, we would urge you to use the influence because it's in your interest. And also, we can find through diplomacy ways to ease tensions um, and to avoid, uh, avoid any conflict. That's a good thing. Uh, and to the extent China can play a constructive role in advancing that, that's good too. I think you, you had other topics that you raised with Wang Yi too. One of them was uh, your concern over China's support for Russia's mm -hmm. defense industry. What did Wang Yi uh, respond to that one? Well, I raised this both with um, my counterpart, Wang Yi, as well as with President Xi, uh, directly. And let's understand what's going on. Um, we have um, engaged with China from the start of the Russian aggression against Ukraine and urged them not to provide uh, Russia with, uh, with arms, with weapons that would fuel the uh, aggression. And I think it's fair to say that uh, China has not directly supplied Russia with, uh, with weapons, with missiles, with uh, uh, munitions. Iran is doing it. North Korea is doing it. However, what China is doing is providing um, invaluable support to Russia's defense industrial base that's helping Russia um, deal with the massive pressure that's been exerted through sanctions, through export controls, and other measures. If you look at what Russia's done over the last year in terms of its production of munitions, missiles, tanks, and armored vehicles, it's produced them at a faster pace than at any time in its modern history, uh, including uh, during the Cold War as the Soviet Union. How has it been able to do that? because it's getting massive inputs of machine tools, microelectronics, optics, mostly coming from China. 70% of the machine tools, 90% of the microelectronics are coming from China. Now, these are dual-use items, but we know very clearly where so many of them are going. And this poses two problems. It is enabling uh, Russia to continue the aggression against Ukraine, so it's perpetuating a war that China says it would like to see come to an end, as all of us would. But second, it's also um, enabling Russia to rebuild a defense industrial base that countries throughout Europe are deeply concerned will be turned against them after Ukraine is done. And so at the very time that Russia is seeking better relations with countries in Europe, it's also fueling the greatest challenge to European security since the end of the Cold War. And as I shared with my Chinese colleagues, you can't have it both ways. What was the reaction? Did they, did they promise to then not supply 70% of not, the machine tools? Uh, it it wouldn't those? be fair of me to, uh, to speak for them or characterize the response. Let's see what actually happens. Yeah. But, 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 but you're hopeful. I'm not going not gonna to put a label on it other than to say they've heard us clearly. But I think as important, maybe more important, they're hearing this from European countries. Um, I've talked to a number of European leaders about this in, in recent weeks, uh, including, for example, President Macron in, in, in France, and I know the um, deep concern that Europeans have about the support for the defense industrial base in Russia, because again, this poses a threat to Europe's security, not only Ukraine, but all of Europe.